All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be on these knives and really on the maker of these knives, Sean Yaw. And that's what I'm really excited about because Sean Yaw is a newer uh, custom or handmade slip joint maker uh, that I found on Instagram because Advanced Knife Bro posted a picture of a knife that he had made and I thought it was really cool and unique. And uh, as you know, if you watch my channel, I really enjoy getting to check out uh, new knife makers and knife companies. And so I was excited to see a new uh, custom slip joint maker. And I reached out to see if I could get on his books. And he actually said uh, that he wasn't actually selling knives yet, that he was still working on the craft and improving. And that was back in October of last year, 2021. Uh, so since then, I've kind of been, I guess you could say, pestering him, just kind of not trying to push him into selling me a knife when he's not ready, but just reminding him that I'm interested in his knives and that I think that they are looking really cool. And uh, recently he reached out and asked if I would be interested in checking out some of his knives. So I don't own these knives, but Sean sent these to me to get to check out, uh, see the, the kind of progress and the difference between uh, some of them here, which I'll talk about in a second, and uh, provide some feedback. So I've uh, been checking these out. I've uh, actually been carrying this one and a little bit this one. And I also was really happy that I got them actually on my way to the Gradish Cutlery Rendezvous and was able to get the feedback of some really knowledgeable uh, slip joint aficionados like Rob Bixby, uh, the Apostle P here on Instagram or here on <laughs> YouTube. Um, and then even knife dealers like Jay Rouch and um, some vintage knife uh, enthusiasts uh, like John Rao and uh, Gary Kiefer. So um, people that, that know a lot about both vintage and custom traditional knives like this. So I was really happy to do that. Uh, so what are these knives? Well, a really cool thing that Sean is doing on his knives is numbering them. So you can see this one has the number two on it. And then if we look at this one, which you probably notice is very similar in its pattern and uh, materials and such, this one is marked 21. So this is actually the second knife that Sean made, and this is the 21st knife that he made. So it's really cool to get to see two very, very similar pattern and styled knives, you know, 20 knives apart, basically. Um, so first of all, let's take a look at this, this first, well, second knife, this, this early knife from Sean. So these two are what I would probably call a, a Lanny's clip point pattern, kind of a slender Lanny's clip, um, but you can see that it has a dog leg pattern here where it's a little wider towards the butt area, it's rounded in the back. Um, and sorry for the lighting here, I'm still trying to figure out where I should film uh, where, I'm, where I'm living now. So not perfect lighting, but hopefully you'll be able to see. And then it has a kind of a Turkish clip point, a long swooping clip point, and it has burlap micarta scales and then a kind of diamond shield, uh, maybe more of, uh, not exactly a diamond, but definitely something like a diamond. And it has what you call a bird's eye pivot. So there is the pin and then there's a brass uh, tube around the pin on both sides that allows the pin to expand uh, and really seat itself in there. And you see that it does have his name and that number uh, either stamped or engraved, I believe maybe engraved on these ones. Uh, but it is a really cool knife. It is, uh, I think, an incredible knife for anyone's second knife. Uh, really, really impressive. In fact, when I saw this knife, I was really surprised at how nice it is for a second knife. Uh, it certainly is extremely functional. It has you know, a solid pivot, uh, workable action, it sits nice within the frame. Uh, now it is a little bit difficult to open getting to some of the downsides. The nail nick is not very deep and, and not very cleanly cut here, but you can open it. And so it's definitely a functional knife and uh, feels very handmade. That's one thing that uh, some of the people that I showed it said is that they, they really could, you know, got the feeling that it was a handmade knife. And that's very true. Uh, but there are some imperfections. So the fitting of the shield, you can see that there's some epoxy or glue that came up out of those edges there. So you can see that right there. 
Um, then the bird's eye pivot, same kind of thing, the fitting and the glue around the outer ring has kind of pulled up a little bit. And then moving on to the pins themselves, the pins all have a little bit too much, I think, spreading, mushrooming. So you can see that there's some, some kind of cracks in them because of that there. And then especially down at the spring pin and the butt pin. You can see that quite a bit down there. And that's true on both sides. So you can see it here, here, and here. And then uh, the, the back spring is actually really well done. Now it, it doesn't line up perfectly with the tang. So that's one thing that a lot of slip joint collectors look for and it does not line up perfectly, but there's not really any big gaps. I mean, it, it again, doesn't line up perfectly, but as for gaps, there aren't, aren't really any. It just height wise doesn't line up uh, perfectly. But moving on to the blade, uh, the blade is is a little bit, I guess you would say, um, rustic seeming. It, it does have a, a nice finish in that it, it has those nice lines you can see there. But the grind is relatively thick looking, if you can see that. And also uh, pretty clearly not 100% even. You can see that it seems to lean towards this side. And... Uh, the edge also uh, seems kind of thick behind the edge. Not not super thick, certainly not thicker than a modern knife, than your typical modern knife, but uh, thicker than the other knives, which you'll see in a second. Now, the swedge is pretty good here, but not 100% even. And uh, the big thing is the nail nick is um, pretty rough, how it's cut out. That's actually something that I uh, follow a lot of custom slip joint makers. Something that you see them talk about a lot is that it's difficult to cut these nail nicks out. So that's not a surprise to me that that's something that, you know, was difficult on, on his second knife. In fact, um, I don't think that it's a bad <laughs> nail nick for a second knife, but it's not, not great. Not, not super, super um, perfectionist seeming. So uh, definitely, like I say, a functional knife, but um, some things to improve upon. So let's not look now at the 21st knife, which is a very similar pattern. Again, it's a, a slender uh, Lanny's clip point. You can see that it is basically the same pattern. I, I don't know if he has a pattern that he uses for these. There are some little differences in the shape. You can see the butt is a little bit more rounded on the 21st than on the first, um, but they're very, very similar in their pattern, in their shape, the frame shape. And it also has the bird's eye pivot. It has a, a more of a, a traditional diamond shield and then the same style of clip point and swedging. But there's a lot of improvement on this knife. I'll tell you what, uh, even, you know, 20 knives, there's a lot of improvement that's happened between these two knives. So let's talk about them. Well, um, first of all, I talked about the pivot being, the, the action being definitely usable on the, the second knife. It is very nice on this 21st knife. So beautiful walk and talk. You can hear how it sounds if you've had a custom knife, if you've seen high-end uh, slip joints, it sounds like a high-end slip joint. And part of that, part of that nice smoothness while still being solid in there is that he has started to mill the liners. So there's a, a full width area right at the pivot that is what basically forms an integral washer. If you're more familiar with modern knives, it's like, it's like a, an integral washer, almost like what Spyderco does with some of their FRN knives. And then around the rest of the pivot there, it's milled out so that there's less friction happening. So that's a really nice uh, feature. You can see the kind of non-milled pivot area there. It's a really nice feature that a lot of custom slip joint makers do, and it makes a difference. It definitely makes it feel more um, free spinning in a way so that there's not that constant friction as you're closing and opening the knife. You just have the, the pressure of the spring versus the friction, uh, or at least some of the friction of the pivot. So that's an improvement upon the action. Now, as for the spring, you can see that it's significantly better fitted between the blades. And sorry for the shakiness here. I also lost my normal um, filming stand. 
but you can see that the fitment between the blade tang and the spring is much better. Um, not, I would say, you know, you can see the connection, so it's not, you know, as 100% perfect as it could possibly be, but really, really close and, and really, really well done. So that's a big improvement, something that a lot of slip joint collectors look for. And then absolutely no gaps on the spring, and you can see that it's extremely even the whole way across. So a big improvement there also. Uh, moving on to the improvements on the handle, you can see that it doesn't have any of that on the shield here where it, you know, has glue sticking up out. Um, on the pins, you can see the bird's eye pivot is much better looking, and that's partly because it seems like the pins haven't been hammered quite as hard. Uh, they certainly seem seated well. They've been peened, but they're not spreading and mushrooming so that it looks nice and even there on all of those pins. You can see on both sides and on the bird's eye pivot there. You can also see that there, the, the chamfering on the top it is a little bit more, uh, I guess, aesthetically pleasing. It's less just flat here and more of a an angle. Now, moving on to the blade, there's big improvement in the blade also. The first thing that you probably notice is that the maker's mark has changed. It's S-yaw instead of just yaw. It's more even. Uh, it's a more solid um, font so that it's easier to see. And uh, just, just looks good there, uh, more, I guess, professional. And then same deal on the 21 versus the 2. Smaller, but uh, kind of easier to read in a way. Now, the grind is much better. It looks better because instead of that just straight-up flat grind, which is pretty typical for a production-type knife, but on a custom knife or a handmade knife like this, often you see this type of Ricasso where that it has... Uh, a, a curve towards the, the spine, it gives it a nice look, a very, very hand ground look. So it just makes it feel and look more like a custom. And it's done well. You can see that it, it curves and comes down on both sides there. So that's nicely done. And it's definitely thinner behind the edge. In fact, it's significantly thinner behind the edge. And I hope you can see that all right there. Um, so much, much thinner. Uh, the swedge, I think, looks better. You can see that it's a little bit more drawn. Uh, so I do like the swedge. Uh, but the real big difference here in the looks and also somewhat the function is on that nail nick. I don't know what type of jig he's using now on the nail nick, but it is doing well. That uh, this, this nail nick on the 21st knife is really, you know, has a good edge so that you can catch it with your thumbnail really well. It's nice sized. It has a really, really nice crescent, just very different from the second knife. In fact, on this knife, you can easily pinch it open because of that nice solid ledge there. So that's usually what I do. You can certainly, you know, use your thumbnail. My thumbnails have been uh, relatively short recently, so you can also pinch it open and it works beautifully. So uh, really nicely done on that. Now I wanna show, before I talk about some things that I think could improve still, I wanna show this other knife. So I'll set the second knife aside here and show this knife. So I don't have a Lanny's clip to, to kind of compare a Lanny's clip uh, production knife. The closest thing that I have is this slimline trapper from Queen and it's just not a great comparison. Um, this is a later queen, so uh, I don't really think it, it needs a comparison with that. But I do have a production improved trapper, or what GEC has called a saddle trapper, and that's what this is. So you can see it has a very similar handle shape. It's still kind of a dog leg jack, but it has the addition of a second full length blade. And that's what really brings it into a trapper. And the second blade is a Warncliffe, which makes it an improved trapper. So I think this knife is probably the best of the three. Now it has all of those good things that I said. The pins are extremely well done. The shield is extremely well done. Um, the, the, the springs are all well done. Great fitment. Even more 
milling of the liner. So I want to show you that here without cutting myself. Um, look at the milling on those liners. Boy, that, that makes for nice action here. I'll show you the action again. Beautiful looking and sounding action. So just a, a really, really nicely done knife. Uh, perfect spacing of the nail nicks, I think. And the nail nicks, again, are really, really well done. You can even pinch this worn clip with the Turkish clip point closed. So that's really cool. I really like that a lot. Um, and really easy to open and close. Perfect pull strength at right about a five. And well ground, you know, just a beautiful knife. I really like the look of this with the red and uh, the red linen micarta and the brass handles. Um, burlap micarta on the other two, by the way. Um, but uh, just a, a really, really beautiful knife. Really, really well done. And um, a really impressive knife, I think, particularly being that it's a two blade. There are a lot of custom, you know, handmade slip joint makers that don't make two bladed knives because they are more difficult, more technical, I think. So really beautiful. I've loved getting to check these out. Um, I think that, that these, you know, would make great user knives, but also great collection pieces. You know, they are definitely, I think, at that level. And I don't want to uh, take away from that thought at all with some of the things that could still be improved. When I say improved, I mean moving towards perfection. These are currently, in my opinion, and in the opinions of the people that I showed them to, definitely saleable knives. Now, I'm not saying that I disagree with Sean's choice. I mean, it's certainly his choice, and I appreciate that he wants to uh, make sure that they are up to his standards, and I appreciate that he has high standard, standards. So I definitely don't have any disagreement with his choice to uh, wait to sell the knives. But I definitely think that these are high-quality knives that, that, that rival uh, many other well-thought-of handmade slip joint makers. Now, this is not to denigrate um, you know, the maker of this knife at all. This is the only handmade or custom slip joint that I have. Uh, this is a Jeffrey Mitchell. And this is actually like a custom. I, I kind of requested this design. Um, and it, it's a nice knife. I have enjoyed having it. But I think that it's, you know, pretty in line, if not, maybe not quite at the level of this one. Um, it, it does have the milled liners. Uh, it does have, you know, a nice Ricasso and all that. Um, but it, it came with some edge issues and... Uh, Maybe just not a, not as refined on the handle as you know these are with the mill or with the um, machining and all of that, but uh, definitely a nice knife and I, I think just my only comparison for uh, custom knives. So I think that these Sean Yaw knives are very very nice knives. Um, I would be happy to own one. I would be happy to buy one. Um, you know, especially I, I'm not huge into custom knives. But uh, his knives that I've seen so far have just really drawn me in. Um, so a couple things that I think could be improved. Um, the first I'm going to start with a little bit of a nit nitpick here. Um, this tip on this uh, Turkish clip point is a little too close to the edge of the handle, in my opinion. Um, it comes to the point where, you know, you can definitely catch your uh, skin on it, even a, a nail. So you can see I can catch my nail on it there. Uh, is it a practical issue? Are you ever going to cut yourself with this? Um, no, probably not. I don't think that it's a, a major practical issue. And as you sharpen the knife, that tip will sink down in a little bit farther. Just something that I think you probably could take, you know, a millimeter or two off of that. And it would be a little bit more to my liking. Now, that's really the only thing on this knife that I think sticks out to me as able to be improved. Um, pretty much everything else on this one is good to go. I don't see any any flaws really other than that. You can see the pivot uh, pin a little bit here, but that's kind of just the nature of brass. Um, it's happened on other brass, brass uh, bolstered knives that I've had. So really that's the only one on this knife. Now I'll talk about the grind on, on the other knife, but the grinds are, are pretty good on this one. Uh, not a hundred percent even, but I want to show that on this knife a little bit more. So moving on to this one. Now the pins are 
they don't have any cr actual cracks and they're certainly nice looking. Um, they just do have a little bit of tear out around them. So hopefully you can see it there, but there's just a little bit of tear out around the pins uh, where the micarta has kind of pulled up in little cracks. Hopefully you can see it on this one. It has a little bit more here. And I think that that's something where it's probably really difficult to stop that from happening when you're making a shadow pattern like this where the pins are just going into um, a material like micarta versus a material like nickel silver, which is what bolsters are often made of, or brass. So, you know, brass or nickel silver would just kind of expand, whereas the micarta can chip and peel and stuff like that. So that's, that's one small thing with the pins. Also with the handles here, this one is not 100% evenly hafted, so that's the shaping of the covers. You can see this side is a little thicker, the what would be the pile side is a little thicker. Um, the show side is a little thinner, particularly in this area right here. And what that does, um, one person thought that the pivot was off center, but I think that it's actually just that it looks that way because this side is a little bit more ground. Uh, there's more hafting taken off of that side uh, than this side. And then really finally, the, the only other thing that I think could be improved is the evenness of the grind. So it's it's pretty close to even, not 100%. You can see that it's more ground on this side, uh, the pile side, just slightly more uh, on a production knife. This is definitely not something that would be an issue, and it won't cause any practical issues whatsoever. This knife will cut perfectly. In fact, it has an incredibly sharp edge. I'm actually like, I'm always surprised, and everybody that looked at it was surprised with how sharp uh, the, the edges. Um, but it's not 100% evenly ground. And the same goes with the swedge. So if you look at the swedge, you can see that it's more ground on the show side than on the pile side. So, you know, just, just again, something that's aesthetic, that's, that's uh, not practical. The, the grind of the swedge is not going to change how it cuts, but something that could be improved upon if I'm being picky again. So uh, one last time, I don't want to detract from the niceness of these knives. I, I think um, that, that most people, most people who buy high-end slip joints, if they bought one of these, I don't know what they would end up being priced at, but I think that they would be happy with them. Um, oh, I wanted to show you real quick. Uh, this is just another example of a an improved trapper. This is a GC um, number 74 improved trapper. I uh, guess kind of didn't need to show it at that point, but... Um, I don't want to take away from the fact that these are really, really nice knives. I think if you are someone who buys higher end slip joints, uh, they, you know, would be something that you're happy with. I don't know how they'd be priced when Sean decides to sell them, but they're, they're very nice knives. Uh, and I just point those things out that could uh, take a little bit of improvement because I think Sean is looking for that. I think that he wants to make these as perfect as he can. And I think that they're well on the way. The amount of difference um, between these two, um, well, between these two, let, let alone these two, is really incredible. Um, there's a huge, huge difference. This is a very functional knife and a very handmade feeling knife. These are really, really, you know, functional and artistic. So, I have really loved getting to check these out. I appreciate Sean being willing to send them. I'm sure, you know, when you've put a lot of work into these things, it can be a little bit nerve wracking sending three of them out for someone that you don't know personally to check them out. So I really appreciate it. And I hope uh, one day to own one of Sean's knives because I think that they're really special and uh, I'm really looking forward to watching his growth as a maker and his, you know, success as a maker. I think that once he does sell them, he will have a lot of success. So thanks again to Sean for sending these. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a, th give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to, the, subscribe to the channel and click the bell and select all so you know when I post new videos. Check me out on social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. But last And last but not least, don't forget to go out and do good.